Last video, Robbie went with his mum and Lito to move a boat in the Sea of Cortez. I watched their progress via InReach Mini, oblivious to the troubles they were having. Meanwhile, I was here at our own boat, bicycling around town looking for the right paint to finish our interior. Oi, dogs. Most paint shops have their own version of a two-part epoxy type paint. I went with the friendliest and most attentive shop in town and hauled back two gallons of PPG paint from the Sherwin-Williams. I'd been waiting a long time to finally cover up this ugly bear fiberglass. I brushed it with the grinder wheel years ago now and just needed to give the surface a good scrub down with acetone. I mixed a yogurt cup of the two parts and applied with a brush and roller. The boat was looking quite clean and bright now, but the floor still matches our brown dog. That dog is so funny across the way, he's like lying down while he's barking. <laughs> <laughs> Our friend Felix came to visit us for one quick minute. His visit was so quick, in fact, that we didn't even catch him on camera. I want to hug. You give us hug too. Hi. Hi. He's so happy. He gets angry when you come home. Robbie returned home with just enough time to set up our small gifts for the Marina Gift Exchange. The holiday season was relatively wet and dreary, but we were given a nice gift this season. One of our viewers noticed the sad state of our battery bank in the tour of our boat and sent us some funds to get a couple of batteries. Driver is going to be here in 500 meters in one minute. We would be trading in our old battery to get a few bucks off of our new battery bank. At this shop, we would be able to get 195 amp hour deep cycle batteries for less than about $200 US each. More concerned about the getting the right batteries than not fitting in the box. We were just having a hard time deciding whether to go with two batteries or three. Two batteries of 195 amp hours each, or 390 amp hours total, was a big upgrade from what we had been living with, and the appropriate amount for our 300 watts of solar. The nice part about this battery shop is that we were able to take the bus back to the boat, and they would deliver the batteries for us for free later on that day. Thing, even though the guys were really nice in the shop and everything, I guess they come out of the factory with no nuts. You're gonna need these nuts. <laughs> these are the nuts you're going to need. We gathered up all our needed supplies for wiring up the batteries, including the battery box that I made just last year, but would now need to be cut to fit these larger batteries. Put them parallel so. Perhaps we could strap the batteries into it, or make another box later when we find the right materials. Negative to negative, positive to positive. These batteries are now sharing.
Now that we have a bit of energy storage, we could hook up some more lights, including these nav lights that were sent to us via the wish list by our supporters. Woo! Also at the bow of the boat, we had something else important to install. When Robbie was in Baja, California, he finally had the chance to ship to himself the long-anticipated package. It's right there, hey? <laughs> A used anchor and chain. You packed this up a week ago and... We were finally able to take off the anchor and road that we had been borrowing which made us very nervous to use. And install what was now our very own, slightly rusty at the center, but long length of perfectly fitting chain and as good as new claw anchor. Although it is not hooked up to the electrical system, this kind of low friends, tigress, windless can be used manually. I am so happy to know that we can finally release chain and winch it back up when needed. It's the simple things in life that make me happy. Deep cycle batteries, 12 volts of power, are gonna keep us going for almost 200 hours. Anchor and chain, all done up nice, gonna keep us steady through the darkest of nights. Our friends on the 100-foot sailing vessel in the boatyard lent us a hoist to work on positioning our engine. What are you making, Ravi? Trying to make a rope bridle for the chain hoist. We hadn't touched the engine since we had failed to align it before getting to the boatyard. Now that the new cutlass bearing was in and the shaft had been straightened at the metal shop, we would finally have a shot at actually trying to align the engine. You're trying to make as many points of connection as possible? No, because the engine is heavier up front, so I, I want to put it up straight without the front coming down. We weren't sure if we were going to have to do some more grinding in the engine bay to reduce the amount of material under there, but we ended up being able to fit the two adjustment nuts onto the front mounts. It was finally in position so that we could manipulate the engine left or right and for the nuts to either go up or down so that the couplers lined up perfectly. Okay, so some things on the engine were not looking or sounding great. The engine was becoming quite hot when Robbie put it into gear. that it's making this high-pitched sound that it was never making before as well. Uh, I will just let the whole thing cool down and I will add more fluid and, and let it run and see why it's maybe just an air bubble that's stuck. The engine's getting pretty hot considering how much you ran it, you know, we ran yeah, it for five part, minutes. It's only this pipe that gets hot, I don't see why. It's this section of the heat exchanger. So we tried adding some more fresh water, because it didn't look like that was circulating properly throughout the heat exchanger. We figured out that the last time that we put the water pump back onto the engine, it went on upside down somehow. So hopefully putting it on the right way would help fresh water circulation. You flipped it? Yeah, I flipped the pipe in the pump. Here, Robby was trying to problem solve whether or not the fresh water was circulating through the engine.
and now we checked what the engine was doing when we put it into gear. He tried adjusting the nut on the stuffing box to see if it would reduce the amount of work the engine was having to do, because the gearbox still seemed to be getting hotter than he liked. With the engine running, he put it into forward or reverse gear, and the engine was getting hotter than our previous Volvo had ever gotten. In neutral, the vibration was enough to spin the shaft round and round, as you can see with this sped up footage. Testing the engine in gear and in neutral, revving up and down, went on and on for some time until we were running out of the small bottle of diesel that we had. We were running the engine, um, water is circulating now because we switched the orientation of the water pump, but then... And almost more than the orientation of the water pump, I, I got rid of the airlock, there was an airlock somewhere, I had to blow and... So there was a bit of water, in, um, a bit of air in the system, you bled it. So now the engine's running, but when we're trying to put it into gear... Now the gearbox is something, you're saying the gearbox is getting really hot. Just for anybody who's not been following the saga, the drama of the engine, is that the engine's way too small for the boat. But we're not too concerned about having a high power engine for this boat. We're just looking for something to get us in and out of uh, harbors. And it would be fine if the propeller was too big for the boat and we just move sluggishly, we just move slowly. But our problem at this point is that if it's getting the gearbox too hot and, and it's going to start melting the gearbox, that doesn't work. We've also got a lot of noise, high-pitched squeals and such. You're taking off the belt and the alternator momentarily. We're going to see if that reduces some of the noises we're hearing. The alternator had been slipping down slowly onto the belts and was in fact rubbing through. That was the obvious bad noise that we had been hearing. We also didn't like the belt system in general, so we made the decision to end our little experiment of trying to run both the alternator and the saltwater pump. But even just that one little decision was going to mean a lot of additional work. Cutting off some of the metal to mount the water pump onto the engine. Don't do what we did. We realized only the next day that all that rusty metal dust had blown onto our neighbor's deck. A couple of dry fits later, the water pump could now be fitted onto the engine above the flywheel and adjusted to tighten the belt. With the last little bit of clean diesel that we had on board, we ran the engine with this new configuration, and everything was looking and sounding a lot better. However, the engine was still struggling to get to higher RPMs, especially in forward gear, and it was still getting pretty hot, even though water was circulating. Despite some progress, the list of things that this engine is needing just keeps on growing. If you remove the engine, paint it, and try to paint and stop the oil spill back in. The fuel system is stopped being leaked. The gearbox can be removed and we can uh, service it.